Hello, in today's chalkboard video, I'm going to talk about the Helmholtz Resonance Supercharger. Now, people have gotten in their head, this is kind of how engines work. And it's not. It's, it's an anomaly that goes on top. Now, what I'm posting here is straight out of the Superflow manual, just like I said in some of the other videos, is this is written down. And you can probably find it online too. There's been some papers written. There wasn't a whole lot out of it. Yet, people seem to use this term quite a bit, even though there's not a lot of information out there about it. So I'm going to walk through it so that you basically know what it is and what it's bringing to the table. Now, it does exist. And the basic idea is that the opening and closing of the valve creates a reflective pulse that runs up the intake and back and creates a standing wave inside the intake. And that's very similar to how sound is produced in like a, a trombone or a horn or whatnot. It's the same basic idea. And that's where it stemmed from. And that if you have this pressure pulse that is a little higher pressure zone, land at the exact moment that the intake valve is going shut, then you can increase the amount of air that goes into the motor. And like I've said before, air is horsepower. So that's the basic idea of how this works. Now, in reality, I've written out the, the basic harmonics. Now, because this is sound-based, you have various harmonics. And I, I probably should have talked about that. A harmonic when you make a note and it resonates, you get a lower and lower repeat out of the resonation. And so the first pulse is really strong, and then the second is a little weaker, and third, and fourth, and fifth, and sixth. And, and that's a harmonic. That's Each one is the same basic wave, but it's a little bit small. And so when you're looking at this, you're looking at harmonics. And that's what this table is. And that's straight out of the book. And we don't usually use the first harmonic, the main pulse, because the RPM is just too hot. And you're going to see that here in a minute. Now, the table even in, in the book starts at the second harmonic. Now, I've added the fifth harmonic just to try and get it down in a range and talk about it a little bit. Um, this is the basic idea of the harmonic. You have a constant number, which is based on the frequency. That's a fairly complicated formula. But that is gives you a constant. And then they basically tell you to divide it by RPM in order to figure out how long your runner needs to be. Now, for most of us, we're actually working the other way. Um, you have a motor. You can measure the runner length and you're kind of curious to see where this falls with what you have. And that's easy to do. I mean, the basic formula is the, the harmonic at the top divided by RPM gives you length, okay? And so you can figure out from that, you can punch in what RPM you want, and you can see how long you need to be, okay? Now, if you want to turn that around, that's very easy to do. You can just substitute these two uh, portions of the formula. So solving for RPM, you are going to just strictly take the harmonic and divide it by the length you have, and that will give you the RPM that it's tuned for. And so you can kind of take what you have and see where you fall. So let's do that. And I'm going to use a small block shim. Now, I, I know that I tend to be a Cadillac guy. Cadillac motors are a lot lower RPM. I chose small block Chevy because we have a hope of reaching the RPM. So in a small block Chevy, the standard head port is, it varies a little bit, but about four and a half inches. And then I measured a bunch of intakes and just got a general idea. The On a regular single plane, center-mounted, carbureted uh, intake, you're generally talking about five and a half inches or so. 
Now, of course, a dual plane will be a little longer, turn around will be a little bit longer than that, but you can take a look at what you've got and run some numbers and see what you think. But this made it easy because four and a half plus five and a half equals 10 inches. That makes it an easy number for us to do math. So if we take the harmonic and we figure out with 10 inches using the formula, we come out to using the second harmonic on a small block Chevy, it's going to work at 13,200 RPM. There's not a lot of motors that go that high. So the other thing to realize is that there's no spare range. Because remember, you're trying to stay in the main part of the pulse. As you get into the negative part of the pulse, it actually takes away. That's why over here, it's saying plus or minus in strength. Because on the positive part of the pulse, you're on a plus. On the negative side of the pulse, you're on a minus. So the plus range, the range that it's going to work with the second harmonic is plus or minus 10%. So at this 13,000 RPM, it'll have a range on either side of about 1,300 RPM that it's going to work at. And when you get below that, you're actually losing horsepower. So it only works in this one narrow little range, and this is way up there. So you say, okay, well, let's go down to a smaller harmonic. So if we go down to the third harmonic, using its constant, that's then 9,700 RPM. Now, that might squeak in on a few small block Chevys, but that's still pretty far up there. And if you look, as we go down, the strength starts to drop, and the range it works, it works at starts to drop. So let's go on down to the fourth harmonic, and now you're down to 7,400 RPM. Well, that's in the range of a small block. We could use that. But <clears throat> the range that that's working is only 400 RPM. So from 7,000 to 7,800, it's going to help you. Below 7,000 RPM for a bit of a range, it's going to hurt you. So, and it's only 4% of the power. Now, there are ways to make more power. 4% isn't really going to help me. This is why I say that typically on a dyno, you see this as maybe a little wow in the power curve, and you go, hey, look, the frequency hit. Um, it's not the end-all, be-all. It is not how the motor is really making power. So if we drop down to the fifth harmonic, you can see the, the range is dropping. Now it's only going to help in a 200 RPM range. And the, it's down to like 3% power. Well, 3% power, you almost can't tell. I mean, sometimes back-to-back -back runs on a dyno vary at least a percentage point. And so it's not really worth fussing with, in my opinion. Um, it just, to, to get it longer, you might be able to make this second harmonic work if you had a 20 inch long intake run. Now, that's like the old 62 long ram Chrysler where, you know, the carburetors are hanging out over the, the valve covers. That's a long intake. And if you're carbureted, you can run into problems. You get fuel separation, you get you know, fuel distribution issues because of it. They really need to be straight runners because the airspeed is up there. And, and that's why that particular setup didn't last but like a year or so. They, they immediately started shortening the runner in order to make it behave itself better. Now in today's motors, you will see longer runners. Some of them are even variable length runners. And that's in fuel injection because you don't have to worry about the fuel as much. But most of us are not working on that kind of stuff. And they are trying to kind of make a little better use of this by running a much longer runner and folding it around the intake where they don't have to worry about fuel. But in a standard regular carbureted motor, which most of us are dealing with, 
this is just not going to really work out, and certainly the second harmonic, which is anything to talk about. Now, you might see it down here a little bit, but this is such a low percentage point, who cares? And so, I really don't understand why people get hung up thinking this is how an engine works. And the other thing in testing this, it's really hard to distinguish sometimes between what this is doing, which is usually just a little small percentage point, and what airspeed is doing for you. And I will do a separate video on just airspeed and talk about that, because I have used airspeed to my advantage before in order to th make things run better. And this is really not how an engine runs. This is a funny little anomaly. It does exist. You know, there are some super dewy engines out there that have kind of made a little bit better use of this. But in your general run-of-the-mill engine that you're building, that I usually build, this is just not it. There, there's, I just ignore it. There, there is no reason to even look at this. Now, like I said, these are the numbers. If you want to play with the formula a little bit, you can go out and kind of measure, and you're measuring from the back of the valve up to the plenum. That's the length. And, and from that, you can kind of run some numbers yourself and see what you think. But I don't see how people are hung up on saying, this is really how an engine works. This is not how an engine works. You know, you, you really need, if you're thinking this is it, you need to go look at my ramp tuning video because that's really how an engine works because the numbers work and it shows exactly what the horsepower of the engine is going to be. And, and that's really how it works. And the other piece is uh, airspeed, which like I said, I will talk about in a separate video. But this is the, the frequency resonance supercharging deal. And like I said, you can read a little bit of it. You can download the the PDF from Superflow for the Flowbench that has some information in there about it and about um, RAM, inertia RAM, and uh, there is some stuff online you might be able to find, but that's basically in a nutshell, and I'm going to move on to other stuff. All right, wish you luck on all your projects, and talk to you later.